In this video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking these copper lug connectors. If you have not seen my other video, which is highly popular, you're going to want to click on the link in the video description area, or you can click at the upper right hand corner of your screen, right over here. There's a circle with an eye in it, and you'll have a drop down menu, and you can click on the video to view that video, showing how you can make your own lug connectors and save a lot of money. The connector right here, all right, this is going to be for a two gauge marine wire. It's on a battery cable for an inboard boat. What I'm going to be doing, it's a tinned wire, fine strand. I want to make sure that these lug connectors you see here are also tinned. Now the purpose of tinning them is to prevent the copper from corroding. And what I mean by tinning, we're going to take an alloy, which you see here, which is lead and tin combined. I'm going to melt it inside the solder pot. Then I'm going to take each connector using this little hook shaped holder here, lower it into the molten alloy, put a thin film all over the connector, allow it to cool. Once it's cooled, I'm going to take that connector, cut off the other one that's on the boat, which is in very bad shape, slide on some heat shrink tubing with glue over the wire first, and then slide this over the wire and I'm going to be using a crimping die to set this end on the cable. The tinning process can be done with 50-50 solder. You can use the 95-5 lead-free solder, whatever you would like. You can ball up a whole bunch of solid wire solder, throw it into this little solder pot, melt it down, and then dip each one of the lug connectors. This is an extremely, extremely useful solder pot and they're very inexpensive. After watching this video, if you are interested in purchasing one, I'll place a link in the video description area. Now a friend of mine gave me this right here. This is made by National Lead Company. They made a lot of different alloys and the company started way back, I think it was in the late 1800s and it lasted all the way to around 1970 when it was either bought out by another company or it went out of business. So this is a very, very old bar you see right here. I have been doing this for a very long time, for about 20 years, making these connectors as well as tinning them. And just to get one thing out of the way, when you're working on electronic circuits, you always use rosin core solder. You do not want any chance of acid remaining on your circuit board, which may cause corrosion and damage the connection that you soldered. When you're dealing with a large piece of copper like this, and you can see it's flat on the bottom, so it sits nice and flat on the battery when you tighten the wing nut down. When you go to tin this, you do not have to use the more expensive rosin flux or the liquid rosin in the bottle. If you have it and you don't mind using some of it, then what you can do once you clean each one of these till they're bright and shiny using a stainless steel brush and emery cloth like you see here what you can do is you can dip the connector using the hook into the liquid rosin flux and then you can dip it into the molten alloy once it's dipped in you lift it up allow it to cool and then you're ready to go but in my case I have always used ordinary no corrode paste flux which is designed for sweating copper pipes together some people may argue that it attacks the copper over time because there is an acid content to this even though it's a much much less corrosive flux than other flux brands but over the years of doing this I have never observed any negative effect from using the paste flux on these connectors the most important thing when you're done using it take a cloth wipe any residue off from the flux Let's get started. Let me cut a piece off this bar, place it in the solder pot, turn it on, let it melt down, and get these connectors all cleaned and fluxed in order to be dipped into the molten alloy. The bar has been cut. It's placed inside the solder pot. I'm going to turn it on and allow it to melt. This will reach temperatures as high as 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, as you can see, it's all melted down nicely. I had to add an additional piece of the bar. There is a little bit layer of oxidation on top. I'm going to try just 
drag it off to the side like that and you can see it looks beautiful underneath it let me scoop that out of there much better. Over here are the nicely clean connectors, bright and shiny. I'm going to apply the flux, a thin film, and dip it into the molten alloy. And that's all ready to go. Let me just wipe this one more time. Lower it in. Keep it in there for a minute. Allow it to drip. I'm going to hang this to cool and show you what it looks like when it cools off. Let's do the next one. Alright, you can see the flux burning off. Let me grab this one. Clear away the surface again. Place it in. Take this, allow this to cool. Let me turn this off and show you what they look like. And here's what they look like when they're cooled down. As you can see, the finish on it is beautiful. Maybe see the inside a little bit, but it's perfect all the way to the bottom. All right. And the same goes for this one right here. Very easy to do, saves a lot of money, doesn't take long. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.